If you know anything about my channel, you know that I do love myself some Dana White's Contender Series, and in fact, you might think that it's way too early to start talking about Dana White's Contender Series, and to be fair, it is, but last year fights were being announced as early as March, so that means that contracts and negotiations are probably happening as early as February, February, March, so that also means that the UFC is probably scouting for talent to go on Dana White's Contender Series next year, Right now, between now and February, I believe, is probably when they're doing their main scouting. So I'm going to help them out a little bit. This is my flyweight list of fighters which I think should be on Dana White's Contender Series. And another thing is, I don't want to be surprised by anyone that's on Dana White's Contender Series this year, uh, next year. I mean, I, I want to see the, 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 the lineup and just know that the fighters who are, at least have seen them or at least know who they are. So um, hopefully that's the same with you guys. So this is my flyweight list. There's like 20 fighters on the list. I think it's the longest list so far. I'm going to start um, trying to put these out. I don't know how often they're going to be out. It's probably not really going to be on a schedule because it's the end of the year. Starting next year, I'm going to be moving house, this and that. It's going to be crazy, but hopefully you guys can kind of understand what the point of this series is, and it's my predictions for who I think is going to be on Dana White's Contender Series 2023. And if you don't want to take it like that, take it like this. Finders that I think should be on Dana White's Contender Series 2023. They're not really in any particular order. This is the flyweight list, but I am going to start with the first few fighters that are returning. So Zifa Shang, 35 wins, 8 losses, absolutely insane record for a flyweight. He is pretty old, but that um that shouldn't really deter the UFC from them because he literally fought on Dana White's Contender Series in 2021. Since then, he bounced back with a couple of wins. I know they were not really against that good of competition, but he's gone on a 3-fight win streak. He's literally got 43 wins under his belt, uh, 43 fights under his belt, sorry. I think it would be a great addition to the UFC roster if not Dana White's Contender Series because of the experience. I think it would just be kind of cool to have a fighter with that many fights on the roster. The next one is Daniel Barrios. He's 15-5. and five. He fought on Dana White's Contender Series way back when in 2021 as well. He lost a split decision to Carlos Fernandez, which you could really argue he won, man. Like, you really could. And since then, he's got on a three-fight first-round finish streak against... Not that good a competition. You can tell what this guy is doing. What he's trying to do is he's trying to get a lot of finishes over guys that may not be the best competition and try and pad his record back into Dana White's Contender Series 2023. And I'm going to let him do it. Once again, he's 34 years old, but he's 15 and 5. He's on a three fight first round finish streak. And he's already been on Dana White's Contender Series and arguably he beat Carlos Hernandez, who now has a win in the UFC. So let's get Daniel Barry's in there. Another important thing to note is that the UFC really needs flyweights. Like they've got like 40 flyweights on their roster. You compare that to welterweight, who've got like 70 to 80 fighters on the roster. Like We need flyweights. The next one is Edgar Chires. He's got a 9-4 and four record. But he did fight Clayton Carpenter on very short notice. I'm talking like two weeks notice or something like that. Uh, Clayton Carpenter beat him by decision. And um, it was mainly due to Chires gassing out, really. Charles has bounced back against someone that isn't really the highest level of competition, but he looked really good against, against Clayton Carpenter, even in a loss. And I feel like when you do a favor for the UFC, the UFC does you a favor. I think that Edgar Chires, maybe he gets another win early on in the new year, and then he can bounce back in Dana White's Contender Series next year. I think that just makes sense. He's also massive for 125 as well. He's 5'7", but he's huge for 125. And now the next couple of fighters, in my opinion, are shoo-ins. Like, the, this guy, Makoto Takahashi, is almost guaranteed to be on Dana White's Contender Series. Like, I could almost tell you right now, he, he, if, he, if, he if he's not going to be, he really should be. He's 15-1-1. One one. He's 22 years old. He's from Japan. We know that the UFC is trying to build into the Japanese market. And he spent his entire career in Japan, aside from one fight against Diego Paiva, who I believe... I'm going to be wrong on this, but he was like a Jiu-Jitsu Legends um, prospect, like like a guy that revealed it. I think it might have been Damian Myers prospect, but do not, do not quote me on that at all. He submitted him in the fourth round. It was a crazy submission. It didn't really go viral, but it made the rounds on Twitter and Instagram. It was actually quite cool. 15 and 1 record. This guy's 22 years old at 125 in Japan. The UFC is looking for Japanese fighters. Dana White literally said last year he's looking for another Japanese superstar because that's what the UFC is missing right now. And he also needs a 125er. I know we've got Tatsuru Taira, but why not get Makoto Takahashi in there as well? Another one who, in my opinion, is going to be a shoe in if he's not in the UFC already is Steve Ursig. He's got an 8-1 record. He was actually meant to fight on Dana White's Contender Series last year against Clayton Carpenter, who's now signed to the UFC and... He hasn't fought for since the end of 2021, but apparently a lot of people on the Australian regional scene are turning down fights with him, which is a problem for, for Ursig. So let's um let's get him on Dana White's Contender Series. I'm sure they could find him an opponent on Dana White's Contender Series for sure. 
But another thing is, I have been told by someone that Stephen Arcega has actually been looked at to be signed by the UFC to make his debut on UFC 284. So uh, maybe he's not doesn't even need Dana White's contender series. Maybe he just get signed straight into the UFC. Another fighter who I think is a shoe in to get on Dana White's contender series is Joshua Van. He's got a 7-1 record. He's a flyweight. He's 21 years old. He just beat Cleveland McLean by second round choke, but before that he beat Paris Moran, and Paris Moran is a a prospect that I uh, was very high on. Man, like this guy's good. Paris Moran is really good, and he and he just lost to Joshua Van. Like he Paris Moran beat Anthony Doe, Joe Elysia, and someone else. I think it might be Nate Smith. I'm thinking of, but there's another another uh, prospect that Joshua Van has beaten as well, and it's just um I think he's ready for Dana White's contender series. He's 21 years old. You could build this guy up over time. Great signing, in my opinion. Another one, I don't know if this guy's a shoo-in. Um, I don't really know if the, he's even going to need Dana White's contender series, but he's 15-0. His name is Azat Maksam. I don't believe that's his full name, but um, he's Azat Maksam, 15-0. Probably doesn't need Dana White's contender series. I don't know if the UFC knows about him, but they really should. This guy is 15-0, as I just said. He's beaten good fighters, 12-3, 7-3, 5-0, 5-1, 6-0. Before that, it was really dicey. But since then, he's, he's fought good good competition. I think he's ready for at least Dana White's contender series. Like, we're talking about a 15-0 flyweight. I mean, the UFC needs someone like this. The UFC needs someone that they can make, like, 16-0, 17-0, and people are going to start talking about this guy, and he could become a big name. And now we move on to guys that, in my opinion, aren't shoo-ins, but people that I would at least expect to potentially be on Dana White's contender series. This next one, it might be a little bit too early. His name is Lewis McGrillen Evans. If you don't know about this guy, the MMA guru of all people actually put me on to Lewis McGrillen Evans. So uh, shout out to him for real, man. Like he's 6-0. He's from England. The UFC's trying to build into the English market as well, by the way, if, if you didn't know. He's 6-0. All of them by KO at 125, which is crazy. A lot of them by first round KO as well. He has been building up his record over time against increasingly difficult levels of competition. So maybe the skill set... Hasn't been proven enough to be on Dana White's contender series because the level of competition isn't that great. But I do believe that Lewis McGrillan Evans is a guy that's not going to... If he's not going to be on Dana White's contender series next year, he's going to be on the year after for sure. A prospect to look out for, 22 years old, 6-0, 6 KOs at 125. Not really something you ever hear, hear of at all. This next fighter is Shuai Yin. He is 15-3 and three and he fights out of China. He's also a flyweight and he also has... A pretty good record, but maybe not the best competition in the world that he's fought in, apart from this fighter called Nige Dan, who is 20-4 and four at the time, and he beat him. Apart from that, his last loss was in 2019. He's on like an eight-fight win streak right now against not the best competition at all, but he does have a couple of good wins thrown in there, and um, I think he might be ready for Dana White's contender series. Like, the UFC is trying to get a Chinese star. I know they've got Li Jing Liang, but he's getting pretty old, and last year... So, yeah, in the 2021 season, they had a lot of Chinese fighters on there. I don't know if you noticed, but there were a lot of Chinese fighters on the 2021 season. So, it's telling me that they're really trying to get a Chinese style. They've got Mahashate, but he just lost recently. Shui Yin is 15-3. and three. I don't know how old he is, but I'm going to assume he's pretty young. I mean, he hasn't been fighting MMA for too long. He's about six years now. I think Shui Yin could be a potential uh, Dana White's contender series guy. Another guy is Marcus Polo Amaral. He's 16-3. and three. Maybe I could have put this guy in my show in series because he has been beating some pretty good opponents recently, 10 and 2 and 7 and 3 opponent. But he was on a two fight losing streak in 2018 and 2019, but he hasn't been fighting super often. He's on a three fight win streak, uh, one of them against Dave Ewing guy when he's 13 and 3. But hey, man, it's not, it's, uh, it's what it is. But um, yeah, I think that um, Marcus Paula Amaral would be at least a great addition to final Dana White's contender series. 16-3 record, very, very impressive. Yuma Horiuchi, he's 10-5, and five, about to be 11-5 and five in my opinion. He's 25 years old, 5'6", and from Japan. This guy has beaten some really good opponents. And he just doesn't really have all that much um, um, credit, man. Like, he fought Ludovic Shalinian in 2019, lost a split decision to him. Shalinian is in now in the UFC, but he's not doing that good. Leandro Gomez, uh, from the top of my head, is a pretty good prospect himself. Uh, he's okay. He's 6-3 and three right now, but at the time, it wasn't really too bad of a loss. He beat Donovan Freelo, and then lost a split decision to Charles Johnson, who's now won the UFC. He beat Mark Clamarco, who is uh, a very good prospect, and uh, then he fought on Road to UFC, lost to Topnoy Karam, who I did want to throw on the list as a wild card, because the thing about Topnoy Karam is 
this guy is so like so marketable even with a loss the US just sign him anyway like this guy is so excited and so awesome that um yeah so we lost to him lost to Tottenham Karam but then he bounced back to Juan Puerta who I believe was on Dana White's contender series in 2021 and now he's fighting Felipe Bunes and I believe he's going to beat Felipe Bunes he's going to be 11 and 5 not really the prettiest record in the world but the level of competition is there as I was just talking about man I do believe that Yum Horiuchi is a guy to look out for I believe he's going to end up in the UFC somewhat in some way why not on Dana White's contender series next year? Let's just make it happen. The next one is Tony Laramie. Uh, he is TJ Laramie's younger brother. He's only 23 years old. He's 6-2. and two. He hasn't fought um, for a while in MMA. The last time he fought in MMA was in 2021, but he did beat a pretty good prospect in 4-0, Tyus White, and a couple of more experienced opponents before that. He is fighting a, a guy called Adam Antolin, which is a big step up in competition from a who he has recently been fighting, at least in experience-wise, because he's 15 and 6. He's 41 years old. Completely ignore what I just said. Um, he should be able to win that fight, and I believe after he wins that fight, you'll see him on Dana White's contender series. I mean, he's from Canada. The UFC doesn't really have all that many Canadian fighters as well. TJ Laramie's in the UFC, but I don't believe he's doing super well. But let's just throw Tony Laramie in there as well. Why not? Dylan Hazan, he's 9-0, he's from Italy. If you don't know this, um, UFC's actually been looking to put on an event in Italy for quite a while now, but the problem is they can't find a venue, and they need a good headliner, and the thing is, Marvin Vittori, for him to headline in Italy, I think he's either going to have to become like a slightly bigger name than he is now, I don't know how big of a name he is in Italy, someone might be able to let me know, but I think Marvin Vittori's going to have to have a pretty big fight to sell out an arena in Italy, and to do that also, you're going to have to have more Dana White's, sorry, more Italian fighters on your roster because we really don't really have any Italian fighters on the roster. Dylan Hazan is 9-0. He fights at 125. His last weigh-in says bantamweight, but I do believe his last fight was at 125 unless I am an idiot. I'm, I'm an idiot. Ignore me. Wow, am I that dumb? Did I just put a, a bantamweight on my list? No, I didn't. Okay, he fought at 125 earlier this year. I'm not that stupid. Okay, I thought I figured that one out somehow, but anyway, the point is, he's 9-0, he's from Italy, he's a, he's a flyweight, like, UFC needs flyweights, and um, he's, he's off a, off a two-fight, two first-round finish win streak, so throw him on Dana White's contender series. If he wins, he's 10-0. You've just got yourself a really good prospect. The next one is Jung Hyun Lee. He is 8-0 from South Korea. Um, MMA Ecosystem, who's a really good news source for Dana White's contender series, and the Asian MMA scene as well, just in general is really high on this guy he's only 20 years old he fights at 125 he's 8-0 and he's looked pretty good and, and dominant in his career but the problem with Jung Hyun Lee in my opinion is just the level of competition is a little bit sketchy for me to to really get behind him like he did have a pretty good amateur career when 8-2 and two. he's looked really good since he became a pro got KO power he's knocking people out but like there's people that he's knocking out are making their debut or are 4-8 and eight. so Dana White's contender series is where you prove yourself <laughs> against a decent level of competition. I think that Jung Hyun Lee should be able to do that. And if he wins, man, he's going to be 9-0, a South Korean prospect. The UFC tried to put on an event in South Korea, but the Korean Zombie was going to be injured, so it wasn't really going to happen, unfortunately. So let's just get more South Korean fighters. Jung Hyun Lee would be a great start. Ungard Bisht is 9-3. He's from India. I don't believe that the UFC has any fighters from India right now on the roster. They have had Indian fighters in the past. But I don't believe currently there's any Indian fighters on the roster. And he's 27 years old from flyweight at 125 pounds. He's on a win streak right now as well, fighting in a Matrix fight night. And if you don't know what Matrix fight night is, they're actually really exciting promotion to follow. Like, I believe a bunch of Bollywood stars, like um, like famous people uh, around that sort of area, own the company. They're throwing a lot of money into the company. I believe most of their fights uh, streams are on YouTube as well. And the level of, um, what would you call it? Like, the, the quality... Of the setup that they've got i'm trying to think of the name but I'm, I'm so stupid right now i can't come up with it the quality of the content that they're putting out is really good the fighters are obviously still developing it's obviously a developing sport in the area but they are the entertainment value is there man like they're really putting in a lot of um a lot of money into this promotion and it's really fun to watch and angar bisht is, is a pretty good superstar out of that promotion i wouldn't be surprised if he's on here i do believe the ufc is trying to get a couple of indian fighters on their roster we do have an indian fighter in the finals of road to ufc which is coming up like whenever, no one really knows, but um, yeah, he's definitely a guy to look out for in my opinion, Unga Bish, probably India's, India's best prospect apart from the guy that's on road to UFC right now. The next one here is Fumi Nkuta, he was on my list last year, he hasn't fought since, I don't really know what he's up to, because if you look at his, <laughs> if you look at this guy's, um, 
Instagram, uh, he's training, like he's he, he's he's hustling, but he's just not fighting. I'm not too sure what's going on. Maybe something's going on behind the scenes that I don't know about. But um, he's a good fighter, man. Like he uh, went five and zero oh as as an amateur, and now he's gone five and zero oh as a pro against good competition. Seven and three, Jason Eastman, three and one, five and one, Alberto Trujillo. There, he hasn't fought since 2021. Um. I don't know what's going on. Maybe he's also struggling to find a fight. So maybe Fumi and Kuta versus Steve Rosic. Two guys that are struggling to find fights. Let's put them over against each other. I don't know. But um, yeah, definitely a guy, in my opinion, to, to keep your eye on anyway. Even if he isn't on Dana White's Contender Series next year. Mark Clamaco, a guy we're literally just talking about here. His one loss is to Yuma Horiuchi, but he has bounced back against Cody Davis, who is 5-0. I do believe he's going to beat Miguel Sanson as well, who is 4-0. And before that, he's taken the O off a couple of really good prospects. A 4-0, Paulo Nakaluna, and 5-1, Rodney Kielohi. I guess he's not undefeated, but a 6-0, Igor Sakira as well. We took, took the O off him. Successful amateur career. I believe if he wins this fight, he's going to be on Dana White's Contender Series, and I think he will. So Dana White's Contender Series, Mark Lamarco, 7-1 record. Uh, if he wins that fight, he's going to be 8-1. If he wins his Dana White's Contender Series fight, it's going to be 9-1. And he's also affiliated with the American Kickboxing Academy. And another thing that I have noticed is uh, if you fight for a big gym and you've got a really good manager, you really can find yourself in some pretty good uh, situations, especially with the UFC. Like, a lot of guys on Dana White's Contender Series, like, there are some people that hadn't fought for, like, over three years. But I believe because they were affiliated with certain fighters and certain gyms, they were able to get on Dana White's Contender Series despite such a hiatus. But... It is what it is. Let's move on. Demir Tolanov is 8 and 0. He's 27 years old. He fights at flyweight and is 5 foot 7. Uh, he hasn't really beaten the best guys in the world, but he does have a couple of Americana submission wins, which are, which are pretty cool. Like pretty uh, I wouldn't say it's the, the most common submission at all. I think everyone can agree that, but uh yeah, I think it's I think he's a guy that you should look out for. Obviously got really slick grappling, a lot of uh, finishes on his record and a lot of submissions. 8 and 0. He's from Kazakhstan. Uh, there's a couple of really good fighters coming out of Kazakhstan right now, so Demir Tolanov could be a really good addition to Dana White's Contender Series. Luthando Biko, UFC, once again, is trying to look into the South African market because they've got um, Drukas Duplessis. Drukas Duplessis has expressed interest in uh, being the main event of a fight night in South Africa, and to do that, the UFC, once again, is going to have to have a massive fight for Drukas Duplessis to sell out an arena, but also, they're actually going to have to have South African fighters on the roster, so the locals can be like, oh, there's a South African fighter fighting on, on the UFC, like, I've got to go and watch it, so, um, yeah, Luthano Biko, he's 33 years old, he is pretty old for a flyweight, but he's 11-3, and three. he's from South Africa, he has beaten some pretty good opponents uh, on his career, he, he rematched, his last loss against Naki Molo Zulu, who's a pretty good fighter himself, knocked him out in 30 seconds in a rematch, which is kind of cool. Since then, didn't really beat the best guys in the world. He did lose to the GOAT JP Bays, which is a bit of a red flag, but um, it was a while ago. It was in 2019. He's bounced back since. He's having a pretty successful career right now. Dana White's contender series if he wins. You've got another South African fighter on the roster. Let's move on to the final fighter as well, by the way. Kiru Sinj Sahota, ace in one. He's from England, but the problem with this guy is just the level of competition is a little bit sketchy for me. Like, he's, uh, he beat the GOAT, John Spencer, 2-46. Um, there's another guy as well that's like 0-30. Reese Street, I believe his name, is a flyweight that, um, that just loses. Um, yeah, good, good for you, John. <laughs> Um, man, this guy's lost a lot. <laughs> I mean, we all know what they're doing. We we know that he's that he's just showing up and losing and getting paid to lose. But um, anyway, it doesn't really matter. The point is, uh, the level of competition is a little bit sketchy. I do believe he's going to beat this one and one opponent, so he's going to be nine and one. He's from England. UFC's trying to trying to get into that market, so why not get another English fighter, especially at flyweight, with a nine and one record in the UFC? Like that would be pretty good. So um, let me know what you think of the list. If you made it this far, comment below any fighters that I've missed. Because I'm really trying to, to cover all of my bases here. But obviously you got to find guys that aren't signed to a big promotion. Guys that are coming off a win, this and that. But if there's someone that you believe is, is going to be a good Dana White's Contender Series contender. Comment them below if I missed them. Because I really do want to know. I've got a massive list on my phone. There's like 140 fighters on this list. There's like 20 people from this weight class. I've got at least 10 from every other weight class in the UFC. Including the women's fighters as well. Which is going to be pretty fun. But uh. Yeah, just let me know. Let me know what you think of the list. Let me know what you think of the series. I'm going to be doing this for every weight class. I'm looking forward to it. And um, yeah, I'll see you uh, in the next one. Thank you very much for watching.